All right, so if you actually understand powers and exponents, this will be a very easy problem to solve without a calculator. All right, so we have 1 ninth to the 0.5 power. What is the answer? Well, we have a multiple choice question here, and uh, let's take a look at our options. So A is 0.45, B is 5 over 9, C is 1 over 45, and D is 1 third. Okay, so once again, no calculators, but uh, if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I want to fully explain how to solve this problem without a calculator. This is not that difficult. All right, so once again, we have this fraction to this uh, exponent. What is the answer? Well, the correct answer is D, one third. Okay, so if you got this right and you did not use a calculator, well, you are definitely going to get a happy face and A+. Plus. And if you're like uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I thought this was easy, but I guess I don't know what's going on. Can you teach me? Well, I definitely can. Okay, now before we get into uh, solving this problem, just as a reminder for those of you that still have to take math test, uh, if you have a multiple choice question and you don't know what the answer is, well, never feel uh, shy about taking a guess. Right, so you might kind of think to yourself, well, I have this 0.5, maybe I need to multiply by this 9, so maybe the answer is 0.45. Well, that's logical, however, however that is wrong. But uh, you can kind of see here that uh, these options, you know, they all kind of make sense, at least uh, these three, in terms of, uh, you know, manipulating these numbers. So you have to be very careful when you are selecting or if you're trying to take a guess on a multiple choice question, right? Try to eliminate uh, some answers, but uh, if you just have to simply take a wild guess, well, that is better than uh, just leaving a question blank. All right, so the correct answer is D, one third. So uh, how do we get to one third with uh, this problem? Well, we need to understand something about powers and exponents, and uh, we want to start right here with this decimal 0.5. Okay, so uh, 0.5 is the same thing as 1 half, right? So 0.5, this decimal, is uh, uh, the same thing um, when we're looking at this in terms of place value as 5 tenths, right? So 0.5 is equal to 5 tenths. All right, so this is in the tenths place. So 5 tenths is a fraction that we can reduce down to 1 half. All right, so hopefully most of you out there are like, yes, Mr. Two Math Man, I know that 0.5 is the same thing as the fraction one half. Well, it's better to uh, work in terms of, or work in fractions, excuse me, with this particular problem. So it's just gonna be a lot easier to understand what's going on. All right, so instead of one ninth to the 0.5 power, let's think of this problem as one ninth to the one half power. Okay, so hopefully you know what it means to take a uh, base to a uh, power of one half. In other words, when we have an exponent of one half, what does this mean? Well, it means taking the square root. All right, so for example, four to the one half power is the same thing as the square root of four. All right, so this right here in math is called a rational exponent, and you can write powers with rational exponents. See, uh, see here, one half is a rational number, i.e. a fraction. So you can write these as, um, some sort of radical, right? So when you have a square root, technically there's a little two right here, but uh, we never write this. But uh, this is a big topic in math and especially in algebra. All right, so this is really the key to uh, solving this problem is understanding that four to the one half is the same thing as the square root of four. Now, just to kind of prove this to yourself, uh, just in case you don't believe me, you can go into your calculator and take four to the one half power. All right, so how do we do that? Well, you want to use uh, one of these functions. It all depends on what calculator you have. But uh, when you are taking a base to a certain exponent, uh, you're going to either use this key or this key or something very similar to this key right here. All right, now this key is called uh, a caret function. And uh, typically, you're going to find this on most uh, graphing and scientific calculators. So if you're trying to figure out what 4 to the 1 half power is, you want to type it in, type it in uh, this way into your calculator. So you're going to type in a 4 
And then you need, this is your base by the way, and then you need to go ahead and hit either one of these buttons. And uh, typically again, it's going to be this care button. Now this will bring up our exponent. Now because we have a fraction, it's always best to uh, put this in parentheses. So you'll put in parentheses, then one divided by two, which of course will be the same thing as one half. And then when you hit enter, you'll see that you'll get two. All right, so four to the one half is two or the square root of four, of course, is two. All right, so that means that our problem here, uh, one ninth to the 0.5 power or the one half power is the same thing as taking the square root of one over nine. All right, so now we need to understand a few more properties about uh, square roots, and uh, this is not gonna be that difficult. But uh, if you think you could do the problem at this point, well, put your answer again into the comment section. Of course, we know the correct answer is one-third, but uh, maybe you can kind of explain why it is one-third. All right, so I'm going to explain this in just one second. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear, understandable and interesting. Also, I'm trying to encourage people that are having a tough time in math to never give up. So if you enjoyed this content, again, hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, now before I finish up this problem, let's do a quick review. So we first had 1 ninth to the point five power, and then uh, we wrote that 0.5 as the fraction one half. All right, now uh, one half is a rational number. Now I did say that any number that you can express as a fraction is a rational number, but uh, I wanna be more precise with that definition. So let's take a look at uh, what a rational number is. Okay, so any number that you can express as a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are integers is a rational number. So what is an integer? Well, hopefully you remember, but uh, here is zero on the number line. Then we have one, two, and three, and then negative one, negative two, negative three. These numbers here are rational numbers to include zero. So any uh, fraction that you can construct using these numbers is a rational number. number, excuse me. So you might uh, take a look at this uh, number, 0.25, and if I asked you, is this a rational number? Well, the answer is yes, okay? So any number that you can write or express as a fraction of uh, integers, in other words, 0.25 is the same thing as the fraction 1 fourth, this is indeed a rational number. Now, this is important because when we have exponents, that are rational numbers, well, we can write these powers as radicals, right? And this is a big topic in math, but uh, I'm not gonna get into everything here. The main idea is to understand that when you have uh, an exponent of one half, it's the same thing as the square root of something. Okay, so now we need to understand how to find the square root of one over nine. All right, now this is not that difficult because if you understand this, this uh, basic property of radicals and square roots, well, this becomes a very easy problem. All right, so the square root of this big fraction, one over nine, we can write as the individual square root of the numerator, which of course would be one, so the square root of one over the square root of nine. All right, so we have a property of square roots and radicals where you can break up this big square root into two separate square roots. All right, so now we have the square root of one over the square root of nine, and this is going to become very easy. All right, so the square root of one is one and the square root of nine is three. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. T2 Math Man, isn't the square root of nine both positive and negative three? Well, a positive three times a positive three is nine, and negative three times negative three is also a positive nine. So why isn't the answer both positive and negative? Well, any time in math you're just taking the square root of a number, you're going to use, uh, or the answer is going to be something called the principal square root, which is uh, just the positive version of that square root. So here, uh, our only answer is three. The square root of nine is three, not positive and negative three. 
But uh, if you have an equation, let's say like x squared is equal to 9, so this is what we call a quadratic equation. So to solve this, we want to take the square root of both sides. So x is going to be equal to both positive and negative 3, all right, because there are two solutions. So this positive and negative business in, uh, in terms of uh, finding the square roots of numbers comes into play when you are solving equations. All right, so just remember uh, there is something out there called the principal square root. So the square root of 1 is a positive 1. And of course, our final answer is 1 third. Okay, so hopefully you learned something in this video. And uh, better yet, hopefully you, you already understood this stuff. Uh, but uh, here's the deal. You know, even if you are like, yes, this is interesting. I actually learned something. Uh, you're only going to retain this and truly master it if you practice, right? So remember in math, the first part is to learn something. And then the second uh, part of learning is uh, through practicing. But you want to practice a wide variety of problems. Right? I can tell you right now, just doing a few of these uh, problems is not going to be enough. So make sure you practice, practice, practice. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.